All right, here we have an odds and ends, odds and ends collection here, and we have some things from Xenoblade and Mazen Kaiser. Uh, this one, the first one, is called the Gold Four, and it's it's gold, all right. It actually looks pretty cool. Reminds me a little bit of maybe uh, Reconquista NG. Uh, back there, you can see the the giant Mazinger. Looks really, really good. Um, down below, you have this little guy, the Mide Gain, I guess you want to call him. And look at this thing. This, does this thing look like a uh, Mud Love? Well, it kind of does, but it's not. <laughs> Formula, it's called. Back there, something that would look like a frame arms. They call it the uh, Storaf, I guess you would say. Then uh, we have the Anvar. 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 Look at the weapon. Is that a whale gun? That looks pretty awesome. And of course, this little guy down at the bottom here. Uh, we have the. the uh, Danboard. These are all little Danboard things. Down below they have a Danboard key holder, you know, keychain. You can slap that on your keys and then you won't forget it for sure. Although it might be pretty clumsy. Okay, this is from Super Robot Wars. It's super original generation. This is like uh, D-Style here. You can see the D-Style. Uh, the Neo... Neo Grand Zone. I don't know much about the Super Robot Wars, I gotta be honest. Although I, I know this guy. <laughs> Sidebuster. We built a, a version of him on the show, although it was not uh, D-Style at the time. Of course, back here. That guy looks pretty wicked. Look at that face. I like that one. Now, I guess this is just a different version of him up in his pose. But you're going to get some effect parts there. That is pretty cool. This is February release for these guys. Okay, looking at these guys. This is Muv Love. Of course, we know Muv Love. This is the F15 ACTV. Right next to them, they have another one that's kind of named after a plane, MiG 21 PF. And next to that, uh, another M21 right there. Moving on along here, MiG 23, MiG 23 Custom. Now, they're calling this uh, Schwarz Markin. The first one said Muv Love, but the rest of them actually don't say Muv Love, they say Schwarz Markin. So there you go. This guy's also a MiG-23. Doesn't look like any MiG-23 I know, but it does look pretty cool. All right, here's Zoids in the Kotobuki booth. Now we've recently fallen in love with Zoids all over again after that death stinger. Uh, the next one up in March, is the command wall and you can see he's coming with quite a bit of extra accessories you'll be able to load them on there and this is just kind of shown for the first time you can see it's a prototype recognize this guy this is the iron kong now we built this on the show seems like many moons ago now although the one we built did not have all these extra weapons loaded onto it so this is the the iron kong Voitsen knights i don't know how to pronounce it exactly but it's going to be Iron Kong plus Alpha. Look at all that stuff on there. This is Zoid's uh, high-end Master Model 10th anniversary. So we could see some sweet stuff this year. All right, here's the, the cool Zoids. Zoids Aggressive, Z-A, Zoids Aggressive. Uh, we had uh, one of these just come out recently. We haven't actually brought it on the show because I think it sold out on the first batch. But the, the Haya, Haya Taraiga, Hayate Tiger is this one. Loving the color scheme. Next to that, they have the Murasame Lager. It's blue. Uh, the, the Tiger one is May. The blue one is just in the future. We don't know yet. Uh, and another one that's just announced here in the future, this white and gray guy. Another pretty sweet color scheme. This is the Megan Lager. And then they have, of course, announced something else down here. This is another ZA, Zoid's Aggressive Kit. It does look aggressive. And this is the Blade Lager AB. And also a future release. We do not yet know any details about release date, but uh, I'm sure they'll be announced shortly after the show now that the prototypes have been on display. All right, frame arm girls. These are really super popular. And of course, you know, a lot of fun. You get to build a model kit that looks like a, I guess, a cute anime style woman, but also with all those weapons here. So they've got prototypes of all these lined up here, all these characters. And on the back here, well, actually, I'll show you the colorized versions first here. The Frame Arms Girl, uh, Architect, the Architect. You know, I'm just reading this, sorry, as I go. My light's shining on that. Um, kind of reminds me of Cosmos, but they've done a Cosmos model before, so I'm not going to be too surprised here. And then we have another Frame Arms Girl. This one looks more Japanese-style samurai. 
And uh, look at all the stuff you're getting with this kit. This is pretty impressive. This is a June release. The Architect is in April. And back here, future releases that they're not revealing too much in the way of release dates. Frame Arms Girl, uh, Phrase Valk, I guess is how you'd say that. As well as the Frame Arms Girl, Bazerard. Kind of looks like a rabbit. Actually, kind of looks like a Gundam. G. De Rezel Defensor, which <laughs> that's how it reminds me of. That looks pretty sweet. All right, it's kind of hard to tell what you're looking at. I mean, yeah, it's a Frame Arms Girl. This is what they called the, the FAGU 2015 Frame Arms Girl Universe 2015. And uh, these are winners. So these are uh, people who have won awards by um, doing up their Frame Arms Girls. And look at all the detail that went into that. We're used to doing all these extra details, customizing our Gundam and our Kotobukiya, the Zoids kits and so forth. Frame Arms Girls are new, but you can see that people are really getting on these and really creating some amazing looking things like look, look at that that's a bronze award winner come on look at that thing maybe he didn't use enough arms well, that's beautiful all right so uh we have a frame arms and a frame arms girl there and uh what we're looking at actually is the weapons they are holding they're not lit up right now but these are leds so they're selling the led sword red and the led sword green and the led sword blue and you'll be able to get these and use them with your frame arms and frame arms girls. And, you know, if you're doing dioramas like they try to do here with the base there, you will have a, a light of swords. So can anybody see, say lightsabers? Because that's what I'm thinking already. Over here, uh, more frame arm stuff. Uh, these are newer ones. Of course, no release date, but we have the JX25 TNF. Um, I'm, I'm partial to the F with that big nose. Although that piece there reminds me of a wing, Kashatria, I don't know. Uh, no more frame arms. This one's coming in May, and they call it the RFEX-10. I'm digging on that. Remember, you can get the frame, and you can swap all these armor parts with other kits. So uh, there is the Dorga 2 frame arms as well. Very medieval looking guy there. And just to give you a reminder, that is a frame arm right there. All right, what you're looking at here, they call the Powered Guardian. Uh, this is Frame Arms Girl, crossed with the Frame Arms. <laughs> you can see that you're, you're gonna get a lot of the mobile, what do they call it, mobile support or mecha support stuff, MSG, support goods. But once they get this thing all together, that does look pretty awesome, man. Eh? I'm all for like increasing your firepower with these mobile, ty mobile type of uh, weapons, suits, I guess you can call them. That looks great. Next up is from Sword and Wizard. This is Fuyuka Yukishiro. She has an amazing base. Look at all those effects. And her weapon is pretty badass too. From the cute anime series is the Order of Rabbit. This is Cappuccino and Tippy. Uh, Cappuccino is a pun for cappuccino. She's actually already painted and up for pre-order on her website. Okay, this is Mamiya Akari from Aria the Scarlet Ammo. Her legs are intense. And she will shoot you up. These two figures are from Aquarian Logos and Shokugeki no Soma. They're both up for pre-order already, um, but Kotobuki is showing off their alternate faces on the posters here, which are unfortunately exclusives. But their normal faces look nice too. Okay, these three figures are from Rage of Bahamu, or Shingeki no Bahamu, and it's an um, online card game. They're really gorgeous figures, even if you don't know the game, they look like they'd be great to have. Oh yeah, I mean, look at all the detail, that, that gold piping. And, um, let's see, their names are Mister Warden Spinaria. That was the first one. Dark Dragoon Forte, and Little Queen Vampy. This is Idolmaster, Marianne Lai. And it's one of um, Ana Mochizuki's mini outfits. Her um, little antenna, little shape with bunny ears would be cute. From Idolmaster Cinderella Girls, this is Kaede Takagaki in an elegant green dress. And a still unpainted Nana Abe. I can't wait to see what this one looks like. 
she's got a cute little bunny move too. Here is Kotobukiya's original series of Koboshi characters, and um, Anne, the girl with the brown hair, is already up for pre-order, and then we have two new ones coming up soon. The blue-haired girl's name is Belle, and the yellow-haired girl's name is Sherry. And they all have optional parts, and they come with um, dresses that you can remove from the body, so you can buy other dress types to change them into. So you can get tons of accessories and optional clothing for your kuposh, um, including like little bags and hats, and even um, dresses and other coats or things that they can wear, just over their normal bodies. These sets get cuter every time you see them. Yeah, I love the cat one. I wonder if they have that one out. The main one's pretty cute too. That one's just a body piece instead of clothing. Oh, a school uniform. Oh, an apron. Cooking that sets. one's new. Okay, this one's brand new. Kotobuki has a really nice sculpt from the Seventh Dragon game of the Fortuna class. I love her cat ears. They blend really well with her hair. Hair sculpt is really pretty. This one recently went up for pre-order. It's from Breath of Fire 6, and the character's name is Nina. Now, Breath of Fire is a game series, but this is the first one that's online, rather than a console game. Here's a kuposh of Ayanami Rei. She's the first uh, Evangelion character to get a kuposh. I'm sure she'll be really cute once they have her painting. I hope she comes with pin pin. And the other kuposh here are from Idolmaster as well as Girls in Panzer. Oh, she has a little tank. Okay, even more clothes and accessories Just for the Just in Kupos. case you didn't get enough. Now do note that these clothes come by themselves and you have to buy the figure separately. Um, this time we've got little blouses, jackets, with cat hoodies and kitty hands, and even yukata. <laughs> Okay, so here's the Metacom booth, and uh, if you've ever tried to film or photograph a Metacom booth at one of these events, you'll know that they just kind of cram everything in there. Okay, so I start with the good stuff, which is the Star Wars, and uh, some of the other stuff I'm familiar with in the next case, uh, like Peckle's on there with her tongue sticking out. She's famous for a chain of restaurants and uh, I guess bakeries in this country, but after that, a lot of stuff in the case doesn't correspond to each other, so you know, we've got Attack on Titan here. But in the same case, there's just stuff kind of wild pushed in there. Now, Medicom, they make all sorts of, of stuff, and as you can see, but uh, with the limited space they have available for the booth, they tend to just cram it all in there. And it's a lot of eye candy, but it is tough to tell what's new and what's old. There's our Godzilla. You know, they don't look so new. That's a pretty old looking Godzilla. And uh, speaking of old, there are some characters in here that I probably have never seen before. I'm, I'm in my 40s now, so uh, this guy, actually they just redid this anime, and that frog on his shirt actually comes to life. Uh, there's the aliens, and Ridley, that's you know, such a great sculpt there. Uh, but they do have some good sculpt for the Batman, and of course the Fate Stay Night Sabers, they do a really, really good job with those figures. And uh, I think here, I'm not sure of the series, but you can see uh, a lot of Detail and posability. I mean, some of these are older, so the posability is not quite there. I mean, fans of those monster shows will really love them. I can see that they've got more than enough monsters here. And even some some real life monsters, no, people. You can see they, they have real wrestlers from back in the day. You know, Ultimate Warrior and Sting back there. And that takes me back. Rest in peace, Ultimate Warrior. I'm going passing it recently. And as you can see, they've got even more stuff <laughs> crowned in these display cases. Some of which we'll recognize. There's some little prints from the newest movie. And uh, pumpkin in there. We've got some Mickey's. we got some uh, Star Wars stuff. and some weird stuff. Snoopy's in there. Um, and there's a kind of kind of But there's my third one back there. There's no, there's a uh, you know, department store. There's a private strike. That's uh, one of the coolest scenes from my year. And of course, all these uh, the, the bare brick stuff. And, a multitude of sizes. So you get these super large ones, and you can recognize some of these there. And that gives me the first time, so 
But then you get the, the smaller, the smaller group sets. I think they are, which are of course collectible as well. Many people really go out of their way to find it. All right, now this is Bruticus. He's the newest transformer from Takarotomi from the Unite Warriors. He's, he's UW07. Um, now Bruticus is going to come with five different transformable figures, which when combined together will make Bruticus, the giant one in the back there. Now, uh, this is prototype form, not a lot of detail is there. There's a lot of detail, but it's not just colored. And I don't know yet how exactly they will go together, but it looks impressive nonetheless. Okay, we're looking at what they call Thunderbirds, the real kit, real kit series. And you can see that they have, well, they have runners, as we uh, have come to expect from other makers, such as Aoshima, Banda, Kotobuke. But this is uh, Takarotomi, and so now, I don't know, didn't know they were doing Thunderbirds, but you can see, as part of their real kit series, it's looking like they are doing Thunderbirds, and they actually look pretty good. Now this is the mole, I believe I have a, a demo of this somewhere in the office that we were going to build for the show, and now seeing, seeing it, it makes me want to start on it right away. More Thunderbirds, here we are. You can check out that sweet diorama. They actually have a you know, TV up there showing the, the Thunderbirds animation promotional stuff. Yeah. But uh, now we're starting to see the toys here. Here's more of the models. Looks pretty good to me. And on the other side, you can see, uh, well, everybody who's a Thunderbird fan will recognize that giant green thing, that's for sure. But they do have like the, the smaller little cars and those other cool things that made appearances on the Thunderbird show. I don't know if anybody can read what that says, but it says Zoids, one one size, you can experience it. And what they're doing is they actually have the Oculus Rift here. And the Oculus Rift, I think it's down here somewhere behind the counter if you can see it. I guess they're allowing people to put this on and experience what it's like to drive a Zoids, one one scale. I gotta come back and try that after I take all this video. But look at the size of the runners they've got laid out for some of these, some of these kits here. And, uh, well, well, come on now. Look at that Zoid. Look at the size of that thing. And look at that red one there. Now, they actually have a diorama listed here as well. And uh, they're going to hopefully put these things in motion. So, these things will be seen to be moving. Here's more uh, radio control or control stuff. Gaga Gun, I guess the series is called. They're uh, starting this with the scope dog, the Votums. So they got them down here. Now I guess you're going to be able to control using this joystick and uh, get these guys moving all over the place. Of course, uh, the public isn't here yet, so they're not doing anything yet for demonstrations. But it looks like we'll have these out and going during the show. All right, here's a, a kit we haven't seen in a while, I guess, outside of the box. The Perfect Grade Zeta. Zeta. It looks, it just looks really good. Even for a kit that's now, what, 15 years old? And besides that, they have the newest PG. Uh, somebody's done a lot of work to this. Of course, I should mention I'm at the Dickie, Dan Geki Hobby booth, so the pros have uh, had their hands on this thing. And you can tell just by how it looks. Um, there has been some work done to this. It's not lighting up yet. Maybe they'll turn it on. But next to that, they do have, well, this giant Zaku 2. And it's hard to get in the shot because, as I said, it's a giant. But uh, look at the weathering on that. That's really nicely done. All hail the Zaku 2. Best MS there is. One thing that caught my eye at the Mega House booth was the variable action heroes. Uh, Devilman, this is the version of Nira Sawa 2016. He is a very, very impressive sculpt. And it's a quite an impressive looking thing. This takes me back. It's an SDF-1. Now, uh, it's considerably smaller than the SDF-1 that we showed in the show that Ryan built near the beginning of his uh, Gamba TV experience. Now, we're also seeing some stuff from um, the uh, Space Pirate Battleship. What is this called? Captain Captain Harlock. Uh, we've seen model kits of these. I think they're Aoshima or Hasegawa did them. But now we're seeing uh, Mega House is going to bring out these, uh, these ships. It is a test shot, so they're not saying what scale it is. But they are coming out, well this first one is coming out in March. Okay, so they're calling this Ald Noah Zero. Let justice be done, though the heavens fall. That's pretty dark. But you can see, I'm gonna try and get some shots here of this stuff. These things are large, they're quite large. Now we're starting to see stuff that's gonna be 
due out 2016s, and they're pretty pricey, but you're going to look at the detail on there. That guy there, you know, he's almost 20,000 yen. But uh, you're getting lots of parts here. And this, this monster here, I'm saying it's coming out in March, and uh, you're going to get a lot of parts to make that guy. But he, he's kind of like a big giant assault pack for this guy here, the KG-6. So this KG-6, uh, I believe, might be out already. And then, of course, next to him, we have the KG-7. And now KG-7's pack is due out in April. And you can see once he gets suited up here, uh, he comes packing. Look at the size of that rifle. Okay, when it comes to Star Wars, I think any style, for me anyway, any style is my kind of style. Now you can see they got what they call D-Spec. Um, this is going to be similar to D-Style or SD versions, you know, little chibi things. So you're getting the X-Wing. And now everybody's familiar with the X-Wing now, that classic mode. Uh, even doing a D-Spec version of it, 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 it comes off pretty well. I, I like the proportion. It is kind of cute but it is still an X-Wing. Um, probably next to it though is what I prefer. It's the at, -AT and because it has a distinct head and limbs, uh, doing a D-Spec version of it looks really good. And you can see you're getting a chibi Stormtrooper in there. It's not a Hoth Stormtrooper though. That's kind of wrong. They would never be able to last on a Hoth in that outfit. This one may look familiar, but it's actually not Saber. This is Master Artoria from the Fates Day Night series, and she's an alternate version of Saber in a school uniform and with a sword. There's some cool stuff happening over here. This is the Saber Alter dress version. Um, she actually comes with alternate parts, so you can display her without the sleeve and shoulder pieces. It looks like bare arms. It's a really nice sculpt and a really nice dress. Okay, Alter continues their Strike Witches series with Gertrude Barkhorn. Um, she's got a gigantic weapon. So these are from Hyperdimension Neptune. We've already seen Blackheart released, and it's a really gorgeous figure. Um, yes, that's already out. And this one is Purple Heart, which is coming soon. Or soon, we hope. It's unpainted, but the sculpt is also really impressive. Here's Alter's Archer from Fate Stay Night, who recently released. And over here, we're looking at their Leonardo watch figure from Blood Blockade Battlefront for the first time. He's got on his snazzy suit from the ending credit song. I've been waiting a while for this figure, and I can't wait to pre-order it. This is Edna from Tales of Zestiria, the game that released in 2015, and she's gorgeous. I love the umbrella, I love the little mascot hanging off of it, and she's just so cute. Okay, next to Edna is Julius Will Kresnick from Tales of Exilia 2. He is meant to stand next to his brother, Ludger Will Kresnick, who's coming out later this year, also by Alter. From Idolmaster Cinderella Girls, here's Miku and Rina uh, with their little cat costumes. And Rina comes with a guitar and a guitar pick. Amazing. Here's Emma Yasuhara from Shirobako, the anime about making anime. She's got on her sleeves there so she won't dirty up her work on the table. And this is Sora Kasugano from Yosugano Sora and a bunny outfit on a really high stool. With extremely long hair and that's why they need the long stool. Okay, also from Love Live is Elia Yase in one of her outfits from the mobile game School Idol Festival. All right, now here we have this corner of the Good Smile booth and we have something called Thunderbolt Fantasy now. They're, they're making some kind of, uh, I guess you could say drama, but it looks like to be done with puppets right, in a style that Japan hasn't seen in some time on their television shows. But they've actually got like these, I don't know if they're full size, full size puppets here. And they're just monstrous. Of course, they've got promotions for the video going on. And it does look uh, like solid. Like They used to do this on Japanese TV. Not all the time, but there were some popular series out there. But now they have uh, this whole one that they're launching now, of course, with new technology when it comes to sculpts and manipulation of joints and stuff like that. And uh, they've brought all their uh, their dolls out, their puppets out in full force here. And they look they look amazing. They do look expensive. But I don't know if they're for sale or if this is just advertising that new series. I would drive this car. I would. I would drive this car. Come on. It's a Mitsubishi. I probably would not drive that car though. No, I'd drive this car. 
All right, let's enjoy assemble is what it says. They're talking about making variations and whatever else. So let's see what they've assembled. These guys at Kyoto. Um, you know what? I'm going to say that it looks like a truck, but it looks unlike any truck I've ever seen. And you can see all the kind of parts used, reused over and over again. I wonder how many pieces went into making this thing. Cause it, look at that. It's even got a mini trailer. All right, so if you're wondering how they made that truck thing that looks like it's from Mad Max, it's this. Uh, I'm trying to get an angle here. It's Assembleborg. They call it Assembleborg Nexus. And basically, um, you're going to get what looks to be, you know, a figure. But you were able to take it apart and just kind of mash it back up together, combining with other sets and whatever else, and make, just make kind of whatever you want. A huge truck from Mad Max, if you want. Okay, I think I was right when I said this resembles that truck from Mad Max because they just put this down and that definitely definitely resembles the, the, the road mobile we saw in that movie. That thing looks epic. All right, coming in uh, June and July, we have what are called, uh, I guess Skeleton Samurais would be the, the most accurate and best translation there. And you can see there they are. So there's, there's a, I guess you would call Ashi, Shigaru. Right, and he's uh, he's carrying his big lance, his yari, and he's wearing you know that that, that hat we see in so many of those movies. Right, and this guy he does not look like he had a good day. Yeah, hopefully he'll be all right. And this guy he's kind of carrying his sword, although it's very straight, Sarugi style there maybe. Okay, and then you get colored versions of them as well. These are July, and you can see they got the Yoroi. Actually, a lot of detail on the Yoroi. It looks really good how they got the stitches in there and the helmet on the Kabuto and the various layers. Looks really detailed. All right, we have some Gamera's. Actually, one, two, and three. This is a Kyoto booth, and they have their uh, mother Region as well. Mother Region. That's one I've been looking through. And there's actually the, the Region there, as well as various versions of Gamera. So there's G2, uh, the 1967 Gyosu, and uh, down here we have, I think, the G1. Yeah, the original Gamera. And then Gyos. This is the flying one. And then they had this poster here saying uh, G3 Gamera Robotech is coming. Now I think these have just went up on the site recently and they're called PolyGo. And you can see that they're trying to use, you know, polygons, that kind of style, to make characters. And the first one that we see here is Mickey. And it does look like a polygon Mickey. I think they nailed it. It looks like something you might see in, you know, Kingdom Hearts. And that, man, that thing is shiny. Polygons. That takes me back. It takes me back to the good old days of gaming. All right, here you go. This is Sentinel's version of the Sahanthropus from Phantom Pain. There's the Rex mode. Look at that detail in there. But they also got him kind of transforming into his, his walker mode, his taller mode. And that does look great. Now, of course, in the model kit, you kind of have to do some painting and the decals, decals applied to the face there. But in Sentinel's, it comes pre-painted, as you see, and it's looking pretty great. Man, I gotta play this game. This is the Arcadia booth. We have a ton of planes with legs. Now, these are Macross um, transformable vehicles. They're actually pretty impressive. And they're in Gerwalk mode. Yes, not planes with legs mode. Um, and then we have, on this side, guitars! Because that makes sense. It does in Macross. Give him a break. Okay, it looks like this is the end of a line. You'd think they're selling anime or something, but no, if you look closely at this drawing, they're holding something in their hands. That's right. This is the lineup for God Hands. God Hand nippers, of course, everybody loves them. Todd swears by them. Well, of course he should. I've tried them. They're great as well. Um, now, God Hand, when it comes to distribution, though, they just don't seem to make enough. And uh, if you try to order them, we try to order them through them. We try to get them, and they just do not produce enough to meet our demand. So uh, in some cases, people come here and they will line up at these events to try and get one. You know, they'll pay the full price or the full MSRP, but they're trying to get their hands on the God hands. And to do that, you gotta line up. Okay, for those who don't know, the Good Smile booth is actually divided up among, by several different manufacturers. A lot of them are grouped together because the animes are all, you know, the same, just different manufacturers. But we also have what's called 3A and 3.0. Now I'll throw, show 3A first. Last year we saw 3A, well I saw it maybe for the first time, and what I noticed is they're doing a lot of things 
that just seem rather abstract. Like, do they belong to a series? Do they don't? Are they original creations? Are they for sale to the masses? Or is this a special order type thing? You know, well, we do carry 3A, and we can get, you know, their products, but they still seem rather, I guess the taste you would say, eclectic. Like, come on. Right? You got a British flag wearing, dress wearing girl. All right. Some people might be down with that. And, well, I'm not sure how they fit into this, you know, Good Smile Company's catalog. I gotta say that their originality is rather appealing. Like that guy, he looks badass. Okay, so this is 3-0. Uh, 3-0, they're, they're gonna do licenses that people know about. And uh, we'll, we'll find a couple of them very soon. Like, okay, that looks pretty odd. But here we have uh, Jamie Lannister. Moving on there, you know, we have some animation girls, but down here below, these are the ones that I'm starting to recognize, right? The Gats here, more of these knights, and a lot of detail on there. These are actually sizable figures, but check out the getter. It's like someone took a, a getter kit and really went to town on it, added some extra parts, customized it, modded it up, and that's kind of what uh, the Effect 3 Zero goes for when they create these things. So there's the black getter. All right, Beast Kingdom, I love these things. Like, sure, you're getting that SD kind of look, the exaggerated head and everything, but these things are sizable enough that you're getting a lot of detail in there. Like, check out the Ultron. That looks great, even with the enlarged SD head. He doesn't look cute like you see other, you know, deformed styles trying to get, but he, he still has that disproportionate look. Like, Hulkbuster looks amazing. Here we have Iron Man, looking good Iron Man. And down here, I guess it's from the Civil War, we're gonna start to see you know, Captain America, Black Panther, there's our good friend Thor. And what? they just look so cool. This is the fine art table at Good Smile Company. Including figmas you can use as drawing reference. Cherubs. And Leonardo da Vinci. This is a drawing. Not quite sure why she's in there, but it's Cup no she's Fuchiko there. is a Figma. And then male references. All right, this takes me back. Uh, many people know their fighting games based on Tekken, but there's also one called Virtual Fighter that came out, I believe, by Sega at the time, and uh, I played a lot of that. And even though you had these crazy polygon-style um, characters at the time, it was pretty remarkable that the 3D that they could do. So now they've decided to throw back with their figures, uh, this Figmas, I guess we are, and uh, these they're doing polycap style or polygon style um, figures. They look great, kind of like the Polygo Mickey's, and of course they're throwing the arcade games in there for us. Now up here we got other figures. We got Ultraman, Conan, and some series there, Darius vs. CS. They look good as well, but I'm all for Virtue Fighter. Okay, this is Little Armory, which makes Figma scale weapons. And some other prototypes in here. Oh, Zaru Sun. And then below, we've got three new Figma from Ninja Slayer Dark Ninja. Looking pretty badass. Yamato Koki. And the Ninja Slayer. Okay, on to video games. We have Yakuza Figma. Yeah, this one just went up for pre-order, and this guy is brand new. And down below, there is Metal Gear Solid, but it's Sons of Liberty Metal Gear Solid 2. So, a little bit of a throwback there. And then we've got the Alfheim Online version of Kirito next to Asuna. Boats! We've got some new Figma from Arpeggio of Blue Steel, Haruna Yotaro, and they're next to Iona. And then we've got... More boats! <laughs> Fig Fix from Kankore, as well as a new one of Cardcaptor Sakura, and she's next to Figma Tomoyo. Those are not boats. We've also got new Figma from Idolmaster. Down here is Uzuki Shimamura. In a pink tracksuit, Mio Honda in a sporty tracksuit. And we're doing Shibuya in a cool tracksuit. 
and then some school uniforms. Here's the Link figure that was first shown at Wonder Festival 2015 Summer, and it is the Twilight Princess version. He's got some very interesting paint shading going on. It almost looks like cell shading. Very cool. So these are Figma from Durarara. A lot of people wanted figures of that back when it originally aired, and Good Smile Company is now doing it for the new seasons. And then below that, we've got six figmas from the new comedy series Osomatsu-san, which is a revamped version of a Showa-era cartoon. Okay, we're here at the Prime One Studio booth. I think we saw this guy last year when they unveiled him. But here is the Joker from The Dark Knight. And that is a lot of detail. It's amazing. Of course it's a monster. It's like... This is for the die-hard fan. If you want something like this, you know, you, you're gonna... You're going to have to pay for the shipping, you have to pay for the price, but when you get it and you're able to sit that there in your living room, like if you are that level of fan, then this is definitely something that you will find value in. And it looks amazing. In last year's show, we did have the Batmobile. It was prototype, so we didn't get all this cool color and, and the detail on that thing. It's just amazing. Now I'm going to try and show you the rest of the stuff that uh, they have at this, this booth. Um, it, it, it kind of spreads along kind of a wall, and but it's so large that getting a camera in a good position to get all this stuff is difficult. But you can see, um, there we have Batwoman, we have Robin, who's looking pretty muscly. And then we're going to go down here and we have all the, the, the Batmans. And you can see you have a, a, a hat, or sorry, the mask, or, the, or a, no mask. Further down there, you're getting different versions. Now, I believe these are from uh, some of the video games. Some people corrected us on that last time. And let's go down there and see what that uh, prototype is. I believe that this guy is called Nightwing, and uh, I don't know what the colors that he's going to eventually come in, but I like looking at uh, the prototypes because you can see a lot of details just in the contours of the sculpt. Once you get the color on there, a lot of times you lose the ability to pick out those details, so in prototype form, that's when you can get a good look at it, and it does look awesome. But of course, once you get the color on this thing, let's go to the next guy. You can see he's got color on. And uh, some of the details might get lost in there, but what you do see is still abundant. Like, there's a reason Prime 1 is, is kind of at the top in terms of price as well, but you just look at what you get. So with Prime 1 Studios, more Batman. They love Batman over here. And of course, all the characters that come with Batman. So there you go. You know who she is. And then we're getting more prototypes. Looks like Two-Face to me. And this guy, this guy's a monster. He's towers even over Two-Face. And that's the last of the prototypes, because we're going to go here and we're going to see more Batman. Of course, that's not Batman, but you know. But look at the, look at this, look at the sculpts, look at the size of these things. It's, it's, it's amazing. Okay, there's this movie coming. Maybe you've heard about it. It's got a couple superheroes in it. Well, here we are back still at the Prime 1 booth, and we are seeing Superman. And look at that face sculpt. It's, it's stellar. Of course, Ben Affleck is here. Hey, Ben, how's it going? Uh, of course, we don't know how accurate that sculpt is with his face because it's all masked off. But they do have one more major figure here, and it's a version of the Batman. But look at this guy. His eyes are lighting up. He's going to sorry, he's gonna have LEDs in there, it looks like. And I, I imagine he'll be able to push a button somewhere, maybe on that base, and get him to light up like that. So there's three from the Batman versus Super, Superman movie, which is coming this year.